It's June 7th, 1995, game one of the NBA Finals at the O Arena in Orlando, Florida. The Magic and Rockets are tied at 118 with five and a half seconds left in overtime. Houston is inbounding at half court. This game obviously won't decide the championship, but game one is important for setting a tone for a series. Plus, there's been a lot of buildup to this moment, so let's rewind. The Magic here are trying desperately to keep hold of home court advantage, an advantage they got from their 57-win season, which earned them the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. But just getting to this moment required a fat line of pixie dust. The NBA expansion in 1987 was supposed to feature three new teams, the Charlotte Hornets, the Minnesota Timberwolves, and one team in Florida, the Miami Heat. However, Jim Hewitt and former 76ers GM Pat Williams tried to perform a little bit of magic and convinced the league that Orlando was a perfect spot for a new franchise. Those Disney World workers need something to cheer for. They were successful. The NBA decided, yes, Florida does deserve two NBA franchises. In 1989, the newly minted Orlando Magic kicked off their inaugural season in the freshly constructed Orlando Arena, or as it was affectionately called, the Arena. They were comprised mostly of scraps left over from other teams, but they came out of the gates on fire tying an expansion team record by winning seven of their first 14 games. But the magic didn't last long, as Orlando would finish the season with the second worst record in the NBA at 18 and 64. And no, the magic puns will not stop because it's the only logical explanation for what was to come for this team. That or luck. It could be luck. The magic went from an 18 win team to a 57 win one seed in the finals over the course of six seasons. The second fastest finals appearance by an expansion team behind Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's Bucks in 1971. And it is almost entirely because of these two guys, Shaquille O'Neal and Anthony Penny Hardaway. After finishing with the second worst record in the NBA again, this time in the 91-92 season, the Magic won the draft lottery. With the number one overall pick in the 1992 NBA draft, the Orlando Magic selected LSU big boy Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq helped improve the Magic's record by an astonishing 20 games. He became the first rookie to start in the All-Star game since Michael Jordan in 85 and was named Rookie of the Year. But Orlando missed the playoffs by virtue of a tiebreaker with Indiana for the eighth seed and thus received the lowest possible odds for the number one pick in the 1993 draft. With one ping pong ball out of 66, the Magic defied all odds and again won the number one overall pick. With that pick, the Orlando Magic selected Chris Webber, who they then in turn traded for the draft rights to Penny Hardaway and three future first round picks. Hardaway was the yin to Shaq's yang, and in 1995, both were named starters in the All-Star game. Together, they led their team on a dream run to the NBA Finals. But there's another key draft pick on the floor for the Magic, albeit a less recognizable one. Nick Anderson was the first player ever drafted by the franchise, taken 11th overall in the 1989 draft out of Illinois. By the 91-92 season, he had established himself as the Magic's number one scorer. The additions of Shaq and Hardaway caused him to take a back seat, but he still finished the 95 regular season third in points per game behind the two All-Stars, as the team headed to the postseason with championship aspirations. Anderson played a big role in their playoff push as well, including Game 1 of the Eastern Semifinals against the Bulls. In March of this year, Michael Jordan announced his return to the sport following a brief baseball hiatus. He had been away for a year and a half, but still helped the Bulls finish the season strong going 13 and four with Michael now donning number 45. But in the final seconds of the opening game of the semifinal round, with the Bulls up one and with possession of the ball, Anderson stripped Jordan, which led to a game-winning dunk by teammate and former Bull, Horace Grant. After the game, Anderson was quoted saying, he didn't look like the old Michael Jordan. Number 45 doesn't explode like number 23 used to. In game two, Jordan went back to number 23 and torched the Magic for 38 points as the Bulls tied the series. But the Magic would close them out in six games before knocking out the Pacers in a tense seven game series. Now, in game one of the finals, the Magic needed someone to step up with their big man on the bench with early foul trouble. Enter Nick Anderson. Anderson went off for 15 points in the first half, including three for five from deep. The Magic's lead ballooned to 20 points before finishing the half up 61-50. The first half was all Orlando, but as you can see, the game doesn't get decided in regulation. The Rockets are defending champions and winners of their last five road playoff games, 
one shy of the record set by the Bulls. They are not a team that's going to be pushed around very long, not with their own yin and yang, big man and guard tandem, Hakeem Olajuwon and Clyde Drexler. Olajuwon and Drexler were both members of the same fraternity at the University of Houston, Phi Slamma Jamma, whose meetings were hosted above the rim and all hazing was done to opposing players. The two took the University of Houston to the national championship in 1983, where they fell historically to the NC State Wolfpack on a last second dunk. Elijah Wan would get one more shot at an NCAA title the following year, this time without Drexler. But Houston again fell short, this time at the hands of Patrick Ewing and the Georgetown Hoyas. Elijah Wan then declared for the 1984 NBA draft, with hopes of being drafted by Houston, who would win the first pick through a coin toss against Portland. His hopes came to fruition, and he was selected first overall in a draft featuring Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley, and John Stockton. He joined a Houston team featuring fellow big man Ralph Sampson, creating a duo dubbed the Twin Towers. Had the coin gone the other way, Elijah Wan could have ended up back with Drexler in Portland, but with the second pick, the Trailblazers selected Sam Bowie, so it worked out for all parties involved. In 1986, Elijah Wan's second season, the Rockets made their franchise's second NBA Finals appearance, but fell to the Celtics in six games. Despite the loss, the future was bright for a young Rockets team, or so it was thought. The Rockets followed up their trip to the finals with a Western semifinals loss in 1987, the last playoff run to feature Houston's Twin Towers. Halfway through the 87-88 season, Samson was traded, and the once bright Rockets' future got a little dimmer. The Rockets went five straight seasons without making it past the first round of the playoffs, including missing the playoffs altogether in 1992. The failures of the 91-92 season brought on a coaching change, and assistant Rudy Tomjanovich took over for Don Chaney. In his first full year as head coach, the Rockets improved their record by 13 games, won their first playoff series in six years, and then suffered a crushing overtime defeat in Game 7 of the Western Semifinals against the Supersonics. The following year, Michael Jordan announced his retirement. The championship was officially up for grabs as Jordan's Bulls had had a stranglehold on the league. The Rockets wasted no time chasing their championship dreams and came out of the gates 15-0 to start the 93-94 season and finished with a franchise record 58 wins. The path to the finals went through the Suns and Jazz, both featuring fellow 1984 draft picks and neither being able to stop Hakeem and the Rockets. This set up a championship matchup against the Knicks led by the man who beat Hakeem in the NCAA championship, Patrick Ewing. After falling behind three games to two, the Rockets clawed back winning the last two games to take the series in seven. Hakeem Olajuwon had won the battle of the big men, outscoring Ewing in every game and leading the Houston Rockets to their first championship win in franchise history. As defending champs, the Rockets struggled early in the 94-95 season, which pushed the front office to make a move. They decided to send former all-star power forward Otis Thorpe to Portland in exchange for Elijah Wan's Phi Slamma Jamma co-star Clyde Drexler. The two led the Rockets into the playoffs as a lowly sixth seed, and the path ahead this time went through the three top seeds in the West. Down two games to one in the first round against the Jazz, Houston won back-to-back -back games with their season on the line. In Game 7 of the Western Semifinals against Phoenix, Houston became the fifth team in NBA history to come back from a 3-1 deficit, following Mario Eli's game-winning three-pointer. After facing five elimination games in the first two rounds, the Rockets defeated the one-seeded Spurs in six and set up a chance to become the first sixth seed to win a championship in NBA history. It was another battle of the big men, as Hakeem faced off against the 23-year-old Shaquille O'Neal and the red-hot top-seeded Orlando Magic. And despite an onslaught by the Magic in the first half, here we are, tied with a few ticks left on the clock in overtime. One would think the Rockets' comeback was led by their big man under the basket, but Shaq and Hakeem canceled each other out for the most part. Elijah Wan is sitting at 29 points to Shaq's 26, four blocks to Shaq's three. O'Neal, however, is devouring the glass with 16 rebounds to Elijah Wan's five. But as these two behemoths battle under the hoop, this game, this comeback, this tie score with five and a half seconds left on the clock came from beyond the arc, as well as some good old fashioned choking, but we'll get to that in a little bit. The Rockets may have been down 20 in the second, but they finished the quarter strong. Then in the third, they outscored the Magic 37-19. Orlando went one for eight from deep, while Houston's Kenny Smith hit five himself in the quarter. Smith, whose freshman year at UNC was alongside Michael Jordan, 
was drafted sixth overall in the 1987 NBA draft by the Sacramento Kings. He made the 1988 all-rookie first team, but his time with the Kings was short-lived, as they traded him to Atlanta in 1990, who in turn traded him to Houston at the end of the season. He was an instant help to the Rockets as they won a then-franchise record 52 games in his first year with the team. He finished that 90-91 season 17th in MVP voting, one spot ahead of teammate Hakeem Olajuwon, who had been limited to 56 games due to an eye injury. Smith began to lose playing time to rookie Sam Cassell in the 93-94 championship season, but remained an integral part of the team, especially here in Game 1. But with three minutes left in regulation, the battle moved from the three-point line into the paint. Shaq and Hakeem battled for boards and traded post moves until this move gone wrong gave the ball back to Orlando with under a minute to go and a three-point lead in favor of the Magic. With the shot clock winding down, Hardaway drove to the basket and straight into last year's Defensive Player of the Year, Hakeem Olajuwon. But his miss was gathered by Horace Grant and kicked out to Brian Shaw, whose three-point attempt was no good. But the Magic again came up with an offensive rebound, this time in the hands of Penny Hardaway. With 20 seconds left, the Rockets had no choice but to foul. With 10 and a half ticks left, the Rockets sent Nick Anderson to the line. The first ever draft pick of the franchise, a 70% free throw shooter, now just needed to hit one free throw to put the game out of reach and put the Magic one step closer to the franchise's first championship. His first bounced off the front of the rim, but that's okay, he had another. His second again came up short, but by the grace of the basketball gods, Anderson got his own rebound and was fouled immediately. With seven seconds left, Anderson was given a second chance. With two more chances at the line coming, Anderson just needed to hit one of four free throws. The first one clanked off the rim again, but this time the back of the rim. The Magic had the lowest free throw percentage in the regular season, but that was mostly due to Shaq's ineptitude at the line. Anderson, a generally dependable free throw shooter, smiled at the basket and let another one fly. And he misses four straight. The Rockets take a timeout with five and six tenths seconds remaining. Oh man, that's gonna stick with them. With five seconds remaining, down by three, the Rockets put the ball in the hot hands of Kenny Smith. And hits, he's tied the game. And that is an NBA Finals record for Kenny Smith. His NBA Finals record seventh three-pointer of the game sends it to overtime. The Magic entered overtime in possession of a 7-3 regular season overtime record. They were used to succeeding in this situation, and they had home court fans by their side. However, they did not have history on their side, as the last five finals overtime games went in favor of the visiting team, and Houston is riding a five-game road playoff win streak. Orlando struck first with a tip-in by Grant, but the Rockets responded from deep, this time by Robert Ory. Ori was drafted 11th overall by the Rockets in 1992. He played an important role in Houston's 94 championship, but almost wasn't part of the team at all. In February of 1994, the Rockets agreed to a deal that would send Ori as part of a package to the Pistons in exchange for Sean Elliott. Elliott then failed the required physical and the trade was voided. Ori went on to average a team high in assists to go along with 10 points per game in the 94 finals win against the Knicks. Then, in this year's Western Conference Finals, Ori hit a game winner in Game 1 against the Spurs, eventually helping them take the series in six, which brought them here, to the Finals. Ori followed up his three on the next possession with a little bit of deja vu, drilling another from the same spot on the floor with the game tied. With under a minute to go, Rockets still clinging to a three-point lead, Drexler went up against Shaq only to get turned away at the rim. The Magic had time, there was no reason to rush, but Shaq didn't get the memo, and in a moment of foolishness, threw a lazy pass right into the outstretched arms of Robert Ory. The Rockets didn't score on this possession, but they were able to suck the blood of the game clock, giving the ball back to the Magic with now only 18 seconds remaining. The Magic called time with eight seconds left on the clock and drew up a play to get Hardaway the ball behind the arc. The Rockets, keen on the plan, smothered Hardaway and forced Dennis Scott to take another timeout. The second time around, they went to Shaq at the top of the key, who immediately gave it back to Scott. Scott ties the game and the Rockets call timeout, which brings us here. Tie game, five and a half seconds left in overtime. Hakeem Olajuwon, Clyde Drexler, and the Houston Rockets 
looking to tie an NBA record of six consecutive road playoff wins and get a leg up in their pursuit of back-to-back -back championships. A young Orlando Magic, featuring the electric duo of Shaq and Penny Hardaway, is aboard a carnival-like hype train and trying to claw back from a second half collapse. They are hoping to keep hold of the home court advantage they worked all season to have and avoid a demoralizing game one loss in front of their home fans. Welcome to A Moment in History. Rexler puts the ball on Anderson. The Magic would use the last 0.3 seconds to bounce the ball off the top of the backboard. The Magic, with their crushed souls left on the court that night, would go on to get swept. Their young core, so full of hope and promise, never returned to the finals. Like and subscribe. Thanks for thanks for watching.